Hello, everyone, and welcome back to <clears throat> Between the Seams with Marty and Mac, brought to you by the Triple Play Fantasy Network. This is episode two, Mac. Uh, we made it past the uh, the pilot episode, yeah, we did. and uh, we're allowed to continue, so hats off to you. Um, but yeah, I hope everyone had a great opening week of baseball. I know I did. You know, I had a great time watching so many different games. Um, but now it's week two, and uh, we will be, uh, Mac and I will be delivering you both three pitchers and three hitters to pick up for this upcoming week. But before we hop in, Mac, how are you, and how was your opening week? I am doing great. My opening week was probably – well, I'm a Braves fan, so the opening week could have gone better. Um, but I'm just happy to have baseball back. I was watching so many games um, – I stayed up later than I should. I stayed up late mm -hmm. for the Jared Walsh walk off against the White Sox. I had a rough morning at work mm -hmm. the next day, but you got to do it. It was a good week. Uh, and I also had Iglesias on almost every team and Walsh on multiple. And I called it. I was actually in a discord and I said right before he hit the homer an Iglesias win and a Walsh walk off would be really clutch right now because the blown save sucked. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> there it is. Yep. Uh, I have Iglesias and I think two or three teams and, um, you know, not a good start, right? No, I still think he – I th I think he's going to bring it together. I don't yeah, know. I, I think in a, where, where he's at, I mean, it's his position to really lose. I mean, I think he'd have to have the string back, you know, four or five blown saves pretty quickly. For sure. You know, so. really fast. Um, but, yeah. Well, and, I don't know what that throw to third base was. That's something I've never – I don't understand how pitchers just pivot, pivot, and then do what you've literally always done for your entire career. Why? I hear you, but maybe it's just something of, you know, being so stationary and being so robotic with your throwing 50, 60 times in a row. Then all of a sudden you got to do this athletic move and you got, you know, because you see like the pitchers just throw it over someone's head and they're three feet away from all them. The, yeah, three feet away. I don't, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't know. That's one of the beauties of baseball. But um, good. I'm glad you're doing well. Um, and yeah, you know, I'm, I'm excited to hop into uh, our, our new picks. But before we do that, we have to review, you review. Know, and remember how we did last week and let's go through them, you know. So, uh, Mac, let's start with pitching. Um, remind listeners which three pitchers you picked last week to stream and break okay. down how you did with them. So pitchers last week was sort of an off and on week. So my first pitcher, Drew Smiley. We'll start with a solid. Smiley was a win uh, mm -hmm. in my book. He had eight Ks, two earned runs. He had two more runs. They were unearned off an error. Um, he was hit pretty hard. Something He had a quality start. His curveball usage was up. Um, his fastball velocity was down about a tick, which is something to watch as, you, as we go forward with Smiley. He mm -hmm. pretty much got rid of his cutter for the start. He was basically a two-pitch pitcher, which is weird for him. So we'll see how that goes moving forward, but that was a solid. And I start. wanted to ask you, you know, do you think that's something uh, that's like just first start, you know, um, just continue, you know, just build off the two pitches you know you have, or do you think that's something that's going to be a little bit more permanent? Uh, I'm probably just a first start thing. I mean, yeah. maybe the curveball looked really good. So, but I think mm -hmm. having that cutter in there really rounds out his uh, repertoire. So, um, I don't know. We'll see how that goes. But he, and especially, he'll probably need it if that fastball velocity stays down. He'll probably need the cutter to keep hitters off balance. <sighs> now, my second pitcher wasn't great. It's was Adbert Alzale. Mm. Um, very, very not great outing. Um, I thought he had the stuff, but his command is just not good. He was missing his spots all over the place. He gave up two home runs, only four hits, but he had two walks, exited in five innings. Um, 720 ERA, not my best call. Brewers, Brewers knocked him around a little bit. Was, uh, was he at home or was he away? I think that it was an away game. I think they okay, were so in Milwaukee. They were in Milwaukee. I, yeah. I can't remember that. That sounds right off the top of my head. Yeah. But. Well, I mean, with Hazel, I mean, there's a reason why he's the back end, you know, a back end starter on a bad team, you know. With, yeah. With, so. I, I think that's worth taking the shot on. Um, I forgot who the fifth pitcher is on the Cubs. Who uh, Alex Mills? You know, I, Alex I Mills, wasted. He got some, the save recently, dude. I wasted some fab on him at the you know first first go around in um, the TGFBI. I mean, like two bucks or whatever. But yeah. you know, and uh, yeah, now it's turning into something different. So that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and what was your third pitcher? 
Tristan McKenzie, which mm -hmm. um, wasn't bad. I don't know if you call this a win or a loss. He had a long relief debut, 3.2 innings, two hits, one on run, five strikeouts. So strikeouts were there. Okay. Um, he did walk four people, which he's kind of like effectively wild. He's sort of in your Freddie Peralta uh, sort of and got a lot of breaking pitches, hard fastball, doesn't know where it's going a lot of times. I still think that's a pretty good shot. And according to CBS, he's probably going to start on April 13th. So, okay. uh, I mean, he was a good long relief stream, racked up some Ks, decent ratios, but uh, didn't start. So, Well, I mean, and, and this is actually something I wanted to go over with you, you know, as far as how we're going to track these. And I was thinking of just, you know, we can, you can say no if, if you hate it, but I'm um, doing like a five by five Roto League and literally yeah. just putting in, you know, you have your team, I have my team, you put in the at-bats, you put in the innings pitched, and then, you know, um, and just build it that way. That way you can, something we can, you know, track and maybe yeah. put onto the website, which we'll yeah. talk to uh, yeah. David about that. But um, Sounds solid. Okay. Um, awesome. So, and let me hop up to uh, my pitchers here. And, yeah, when I look at my pitchers versus hitters, I, you know, the, the pitchers were a lot better. So, uh, we'll start off with my first one, which was Ryan Yorbro uh, versus the Marlins. Uh, 5.2 innings, zero earned runs, only three Ks, but that's pretty much what I expect from him. Um, a 0 0.71 whip, um, got the no decision, but, you know, he did he did really well. And that's kind of what I expected, um, yep. especially against the Marlins, you know. Not Friday a Friday Pirate. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, the next inning, if you started him, in, you know, for the whole week, which I didn't recommend, but it is what it is, he got blown up. I mean, the Red yeah, Sox destroyed him. So, um, but, you know, even if you take a step back from those two starts, he's doing what he always does. He's limiting hard contact. His average exit velocity is only uh, 82.4 miles an hour, which is like, I think, in the 93rd percentile. Um, he's not walking people. So if, and this is something I actually saw on Twitter, and I, and I remember thinking about this last year, if they're able to keep him, four or five, six innings each time, you know, and kind of get to him, you know, like get him out before, you know, the fatigue starts setting in. I think that's when he's going to be really good, mm -hmm. but um, they kind of let him go a little bit longer than they usually do. And we saw what happened against the Red Sox. So that's something to monitor, you know, and, and that's why I try to stay away from race players. We don't know what they're going to do that pitching staff, you know, those uh, they're crazy down there. You know? Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, and then number two is going to be Mike Miner versus the Rangers. So he earned the win. Um, he gave up four runs in six innings, which is meh. You know, you don't love it. Classic but it's Mike six. Miner. Oh, what, what did I say? No, I said classic Mike Miner. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> I, thought said, I thought you said I said Mark Miner. I'm like, oh no, I actually know somebody. So I've actually done that so many times. I was like, I did it again. But <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it, that is, you know, old veteran dude. Nothing new. I mean, he got the six Ks, which I was actually impressed with. Um, and 1.00 whip. Um, what I, I was looking at his baseball savant page and what stood out to me the most was this 60% uh, whiff rate on his curveball. Um, that's pretty cool. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Mike, my, no, nothing pretty he sick. does. Right. Yeah. Especially for a dude that nothing ever stands out to me, um, with him. So that was, you know, it no, worked out I mean, pretty well. He, he, I mean, he's only a season removed from 200 K's. Mm -hmm. in uh, like 203 innings or whatever. So that's true. He's, he's definitely got the whiff stuff. Yep. Yep. So, you know, hopefully he's able to build on that. Um, you know, I, I love his park being in Kauffman stadium. So yeah, that, that one was good. And then the Jake Arrieta, the, Arrieta, it worked out. It worked out, man. It was a ballsy um, move. It was ballsy. I think it's less to do with anything, you know, me being a genius or anything, and more to do with the Pirates can't hit. And if you take a Brian Hayes out of that lineup, you know, and also out of almost every one of my fantasy baseball teams because I drafted him literally everywhere. I mean, what do you mean Kevin Newman was a god in spring training? <laughs> he was. And I, you know what? I'm not going to say I bought into it, but I had my, you know, I was listening. I did. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And – I think Reynolds did okay. I have him in my TGFBI league. I think he got a home run or something. You know, yeah, I mean, he did. Yeah. You know, that's fine. But uh, yeah, I mean, er, already had a, earned a quality start. One earn run over six innings, uh, five strikeouts. It, it worked out well. Um, in the throughout the week, you know, as you, I'm always on Twitter. Throughout the week, as I'm noticing more and more people are posting, like, "Oh, already had a, that was a good start." You know, he actually might be good at the first half part of the season. It was just like yeah. a little reassuring, being like, "Okay, cool." So it wasn't that that wild. But, 
Yeah, so uh, we'll get these, uh, you know, the pictures, and we'll get that up on the uh, Excel spreadsheet when we, you know, when we do it. Um, but let okay. me know, Mac. Let me know your uh, three hitters from last week. Three hitters from last week was a little bit better than pitchers, I think. My hitters from last week were Kyle Seeger, Taylor Trammell, and Jesse Winker. Okay. Uh, Kyle Seeger was pretty mid. I mean, so he's, he's his slash line is 250, 308, 333. Uh, he's starting the season with an 87 weighted runs created. It's not great, um, but it's not bad. He had a really good game last night. He had two singles, a double, three RBIs, scored a run. Which um, not to put you off, but actually that reminds me, um, you know, for the listeners, when we actually do compose our players for the week, we, you know, we go through the whole week. So it's oh, yeah. possible that these players turn around over the weekend, you know, so um, so that's what will be added to it. All right, sorry, yes. go ahead. And no, you're good. And he's gotten pretty unlucky. He's been hitting the ball pretty hard. Uh, he's actually got a 314x batting average, expected batting average versus the 250 and then a, a 366 expected Woba. So I'm pretty confident he'll turn it around. He always hits the ball hard. He's a streaky yes. hitter, but when he's on, he's really on. Mm-hmm. And he um, has sneaky uh, stolen bases, you know, yeah, he, seven, eight. He you will know. get you a couple stolen bases a year because people don't expect him to run. So yep. he, he's kind of like the Freddie Freeman type. He'll, he picks his spots well. Yep. But uh, speaking of stolen bases, Taylor Trammell has not had a great cup of coffee. Uh, 118 batting average. He hasn't looked comfortable in the box. Um, happens a lot. I thought that spring training numbers were going to translate. I overreacted. I did the classic no-no. Um, but we all, we all do it. I know. We all do it. But he still got uh, pretty much a starting job. Um, the Mariners will do anything to keep Kellenic out. So they'll keep That's starting. Yeah, they, they called up Bishop recently when uh, Fraley went down. So. Yep. They got to get that service time in, which sucks, but it is what it is. Um, so Tremel was not the best pick, but he still has a chance to turn around, like you said, and he's still starting. Uh, and the other one was Winker. There's no real verdict there. He had two singles, a double, and a walk, and nine plate appearances, and he got sick. And he's just been sick, I guess. He's just been out of the lineup sick for like we, uh, four or five games now, so – Mm, and that was it was non COVID, right? No, just a non COVID. They said he just had some like, yeah. I guess it was like a, the flu or something. They've not they've been pretty mm. like kept it under wraps because yep. no one wants to be sick right now. So right, right. But yeah, those yeah. are those good guys. So Winker, I think he was hitting the ball pretty well before he got sick, though. I mean, he's a stat cast darling. You know, I bought him two years ago. Um, he he had that stretch last year where he had I think seven eight home runs in a small amount of time. Yeah, so, and I, I noticed that his rostered percentage has gone down since he's kind of been an empty spot in people's rosters. So, I mean, if yep. you get a chance to pick him up, I think he's still a solid guy to pick up. He's one of those people that's burned me too many times. So, I just, <laughs> you know, I've, I've moved away from him. But I'm always, you know, but like anytime you know, someone breaks your heart, you're still, you know, you still look him up on and Facebook or something. We'll see. Yeah, <laughs> still look him up. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, okay, cool. So, let me hop into my uh, next three hitters. Um you know, um, or who had the, the hitters I had um, last week. So we'll start with uh, Robbie Grossman. So it, it, it's exactly that. It's gross. So through five games, he's batting 167, no home runs. All that pop I was talking about where he gained spring training and piggybacking off last year, it's nowhere to be found. Um, it could be because it's freezing outside. Um, I don't know. But if – and this is <laughs> – if you're an OBP league, you're actually still pretty good. I mean, his OBP right now is 524 because he had nine walks in that time. So he's like an OBP god at this point. Yeah. Yeah. He, well, at one point, he was like 0 for 18 with like nine walks or 500, yep. 500 OBP, zero batting average. It, it's something that I don't ever remember seeing, at least not that profound. Um, so it's actually pretty funny. Yeah. Um, but as a Tigers fan, we need more. So, um, and yeah. then it, and the, we, we have the inverse. I thought, you know, my pitching actually did well and my hitters were awful. So this is a good transition. So Kiki Hernandez and Mr. Enrique, um, 18 at bats, he's hitting one, you know, a buck 11 with only two hits. I mean, I don't, I don't think I have to analyze that. He's been awful. Yep. Um, that's it. Two hits and 18 at bats. Yeah, yep. he's already. I think they've already moved him out a little bit more from the um, from the leadoff as he he solely had that. 
I mean, he's like a career 297 on base percentage guy. Like, I think he's like yeah. maybe 300. I don't know. It's just a, I don't know what they were thinking trying to put him in the leadoff spot to begin with. But yeah. I, I, maybe some of the Dodgers mystique, you know, just kind of just, you know, he's a champion and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, know, I the, think the, the Red Sox. I think the Red Sox are going to get burned, but I mean the Verdugo hype. This is a hot take, but I think that Verdugo has just been in Tindy all over again. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna, I don't know. That's Verdugo. a different. Yeah, write it down. I am. And we'll, we'll revisit this in September. We'll see oh yeah. On. All right, good. Um, and then last is Corey Dickerson from the Marlins. So pretty much the same. Actually, last night he did better. I think he had a two, th- two for three la- uh, night. So this would go up because I, I did the uh, stats last night. But yeah, batting one forty three and over fourteen at bats. You know, ground ground balls, pop ups, everything you don't want. So um, <laughs> my biggest uh, standout is going to be Grossman um, from the week. So <laughs> we'll be updating those. Um, as I say, we'll probably have them up at the website uh, on the website at some point. That way you guys can track them. But uh, yeah, let's build off those and let's move into week two hitters. Um, tell me who your top three are coming up to this week. Top three hitters. I got uh, Jaimer Candelario, mm-hmm. uh, Justin Upton, and Jason Hayward. And I, um, I, I really debated Sam Hilliard. If you, uh, if you follow me on Twitter, Sam, I've been, I've been giving Sam some love, but I can't give the Rockies any love because they suck and they just won't put him in the lineup. He's in the lineup today yeah. though. Um, yeah. which I don't, I don't get it. He hit 35 home runs and I, I get it as PCL, but he hit 35 home runs in 2018, in the minors. I mean, just give the guy some regular bats. He's parked two balls, 450 feet. It is what it is. I mean, that's the Rockies, right? I mean, there's it's so the many Rockies. players that we want that they wish they would just give them a, a full, you know, just, a full plate of at bats. You know, uh, Garrett Hansen, which we'll we'll touch on later. You know, that's somebody for me. Same exact thing. Um, and I don't know if you actually looked into next week, like who like the, who the Rockies are playing. And this is why I wanted to put I'll just quickly. I, I wanted to put Hansen on Hansen on my list, but I couldn't do it. Because they're playing the Dodgers and then they play the Mets. Yep. And it's like, man. Mm, yeah. Don't want to go in against those pitching staffs. Ooh, those are the two. I mean, those are two good ones. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. so into yeah. Candelario, though. I mean, so yeah. he's a guy, he's a Tiger. Um, the Candy Man. Yeah. The Candy Man. He's first base and third base eligible in most places. He's only 15% rostered in Yahoo. If you need any corner infield help, uh, he in 52 games last year he slashed. He had kind of a breakout. He had 136 uh, weighted runs created. He slashed 297, 369, 503. If you pace out his counting stats to a full season, he's hitting 20 plus home runs, 80 runs, 80 RBIs. Um, it's a small sample size, but this sort of power doesn't just come out of nowhere. If you look back, I mean, he's not had great stats. He didn't have great stats in 2019, 2018. But his max exit velocity was in 94th percentile in uh, 2019. He hit a ball 114.2 miles per hour. It was this 467-foot home run. He's got some pop. And uh, uh, there's an interesting article by uh, Jeremy Siegel of Pitcher List where he talks about the importance of, like, 90th percentile exit velocity and how if a guy can reach – like if the if the right tail of his exit velocity is significantly higher than another guy, but their average exit velocities are the same, that dude's gonna have significantly more power potential, mm. generally speaking. And so Candelario has just kind of always had this power here, but he made some mechanical changes to his lower body um, between the 2019 and 2020 season. He's carried over those changes. Um, he mashes lefties. He hit 400 against lefties last year. He's a career 283 hitter against lefties. He's going to see a lefty heavy A's rotation this week. Um, a bad so, rotation. Yeah. Yeah, not the best rotation. So I think that he's a great streamer pick. Um, and he's a guy to keep on your watch list regardless. And then Justin Upton. I'm just a boy. I mean, I'm all aboard the J-Up. I think resurgence train. I think he's great. Mm-hmm. I think he's only 33. People forget about him because he's had he's been hurt. As long as Justin Upton 33. is 33. Literally, literally, only 33 literally years only old. 33. I can't he's, believe it. He's 13% rostered. He's had 15 seasons in the major leagues already. But as long as the dude's healthy, mm-hmm. I mean, he's just he's mashing the ball. Drops bombs. I mean, drops bombs. 
He's got three, I think, 308 career home runs, multiple seasons over 30 home runs, and he's hitting the ball well already this year. He's already got a homer. He's never going to be a great batting average. He's never been his highest he's batting 50, average, right? barely touched. Yeah, he's usually sitting 250, 260 range, but he's going to give you a lot. Counting sets, he's in the middle of a great Angels lineup. I love Jay, Braves yep. fan. He did. He was so good for us for the Braves for a while there, a couple of years. Mm-hmm. And I'm just rooting for the guy. Um, he gets the Blue Jays and the Royals in consecutive series. Neither of them have great rotations. A couple of fastball heavy guys. He mashes fastballs. Um, put him out there. And then yeah. finally, Jason Hayward. I, I mean, I love old guys. I guess That's what I'm saying I'm a, I'm a sucker for old value. Old guys who get drop off. He's only well, you know what you're gonna rostered. get. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He's only five percent rostered. And Hayward had a bit of a resurgence last year. He had a breakout, a post-hype breakout year, uh, 131 weighted runs created. Um, 2019, he kind of changed his approach. He became more selective and he swung a lot less, but he swung a lot more in the zone. This raised his K percentage a lot, but it also raised his walk percentage. And this approach carried over into 2020. In 2020, he had his second best OBP ever. And he had a career high walk rate while still hitting, I think, six home runs, um, which puts him on pace for, you know, your 20 home run guy. Like he's not hitting in the best lineup, but I think the Cubs are going to be streaky. Um, I think he could be on. He's not had a great start to the year, but he had a he has a 182 bat pip so far this year. So that'll turn around. Um, he's been putting the ball in play. I don't know. I think that this approach, this approach is one that'll stick. He's he's done it for two years now. It's consistent. I think people are just sleeping on him because he had a couple of rough years, but he's not chasing yeah. anymore. Uh, and I, yeah, I think he just fell off everybody's radar. You yeah, know, the, the Cubs years, you know, where I don't even know if you're rostering them in a deep five outfielder league. You know, maybe for a week or two. Um, yeah. And I think some of it, you know, all the hype he had as a young brave, you know, coming through, we thought he was going to be, you know, McCutcheon or you know whatever. You know, we thought he was going to be like an MVP candidate. Um, never worked out that that much, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think that's. Um, I love the Upton pick. Uh, he, I was huge on him last year because he was going so late, and then he had an even, you know, had a terrible year. So now people are yeah. completely sleeping on him, which is yeah, awesome. Com- thanks. I, I think so too. And Hayward, of course, goes without saying, is pretty deeply pick. But I've got I've got him in a dynasty. If it's an OBP league, he's going to put you up around three ninety. 400 with a walk rate. I mean, his walk rate last year was 20%. So that's good. That's really yeah. good. Yep. Yeah. Uh, average is around 8%, I think. So, um, yeah, great. All right. Awesome. Well, yeah, I'm going to hop into um, uh, my three hitters. So, first, we're going to start off with somebody who I don't, I can't believe I'm doing this, but I mean, uh, you look at what Tyler Nakeman and what he's done over the last, you know, week. Uh, you know, if you look at his stat cast page, it's blood red. I mean, 99th percentile and average exit velocity. 95th percentile and max exit velocity slugging hard hit. The hard hit percentage is 100th percentile. I yep. think that that's pretty good. Yep. Every time um, he hits the ball, he mashes it. <laughs> it's insane. He's batting 316. He already has four home runs, you know, 13 RBIs. Uh, he, he's not Albert Pujols in his prime. He's not, unfortunately. But for the next week, you know, uh, I'm going to ride this wave. Yeah. Um, it's going against San Francisco, which is, you know, not, nothing really stands out too much from a pitching perspective goes to Cleveland. I mean, you know, he has Bieber and after that, I'm not really too afraid. Um, he's only 15% rostered. I think that's obviously going to go up, you know, by the time, you know, if you wait till the weekend to scoop him. but, um, I would start there with, with yep. him. I scooped him in a dynasty league already. Put there me up a home run yesterday. So, there you go. okay, here we go. Um, okay. And then number two, Akil Badu. So, or Badu, I'm sorry. So as a Tigers fan, this guy has been absolutely insane. Um, there's this whole, you know, I have seen each game, so I'm watching it. His parents are in the crowd, you know, for the first oh, home yeah. run he hits, they're high five and they're hugging, you know, the, the next game he pinch hits, um, you know, gets a, a walk off hit, you know, to win the game. I mean, it's just been a grand slam in between there too. Yeah. Grand slam. It's just, uh, it's, it's been, you know, miraculous. From and a everybody. triple yesterday, right? Yes, triple. Yep. Insane. Um, and so, yeah, so I'm going to go with him. Now, last night when I looked at his own percentage, it was 37%. Now he's being rostered in 43% of leagues. So just over, 
you know, six, eight hours or whatever it was, it's, he's already getting scooped everywhere. So um, hop in on him. Um, the Tigers have seven games. So if he does sit for one or two of them, because AJ Hinch is just classically doing what the Tigers do and sit their good players. So they lose, but hopefully, you know, whatever three versus Houston, which is, eh, but then four at the A's. Um, so we'll see there, but yeah, seven, seven games. Um, and I have just been loving every second of it. And then lastly would be Omar Navarez. Um, yeah. So catcher on the Brewers only owned uh, a roster in 17% of leagues. He's batting 500 with two home runs. And yeah. next week he plays the Cubs and the Pirates. And so nothing inspiring there. And I know for me, I'm always looking for a catcher to possibly stream to catcher league. You, you know, you, maybe you're sick of your second catcher already drop him, pick this guy up. He's been doing pretty well. I mean, he plays in uh, a good hitters park. The around him's not doing as well as we thought with, you know, here uh, 0 for 18 or whatever he is. And uh, yeah, it's still striking out. Um, but yeah, I, I like the um, so Naquin, Badu, and then um, Omar Navarez. So speaking of catchers, how are you feeling about Ramos for the Tigers? I think he's got two home runs. Two home runs. He has the most hits um, over 100 miles an hour exit velocity. Yeah, um, and the man, I think he. I mean, they seem pretty consistently putting him in DH when he's not catching too. Yep. Which is, I mean, he he's only he had an awful year last year, but the year before that, he was one of the top values at catcher. So yeah, and he's always batting somewhere around 300. You know, as a catcher uh, or as a fantasy owner, you love that. Um, he's still an awful defensive catcher. Horrible. I, it's his bat keeps him in the lineup. It, that's the only thing. You're absolutely right. And and just you know, briefly on that, I was ex I, when we when the Tigers signed him, I was excited that we have a bat. You know, because um, that's probably one of our better bats just automatically. But I was bummed for the development of our young pitching staff and having to deal with that. Um, you know, yeah. it's a hurdle I don't want them to have to overcome, but it is what it is. But he's doing, yeah, I, hey, if you're going to hit, you're going to play, especially in that lineup. So, yeah, I really like what Ramos. And I want to do a quick shout out to Garrett Hampson, 53% rostered. He had three steals last night. Um, I wanted to put him in this, but. He's playing the Dodgers and the Mets, so I cannot recommend him just yet. And it's the Rockies, so they're always doing crazy stuff. But uh, yeah, shout out to him. Yeah, and Hampson, you got to keep him on your radar. If you follow, if you call, follow Eric Cross on Twitter, mm -hmm. uh, literally the Hampson hype is still real. <laughs> Good. Um, all right, well, let's hop into the uh, the three pitchers for um, week two. Who, who are you streaming? All right, so I'm streaming uh, Scooball. Tariq Skubal, Jordan Montgomery, and Yusei Kikuchi. Those are my those are my three picks. Now let's start with Skubal because Skubal had a really good deb debut season debut against Cleveland. He uh, pitched 5.1 innings. He went five and a third, four Ks, two earned runs. The Ks are a little low, which is interesting, especially against the relatively anemic Cleveland offense. Mm -hmm. but he's going to get Cleveland again this week. He's got a ton of K upside. I'm not expecting 4Ks to be an every start thing for him. In the minors, he was a 13 per K9 guy. <clears throat> Excuse me. And last year, he was a 10. Uh, he had a 10.4 K9. Uh, if 4Ks over five innings isn't going to be the thing that you get from him usually. Something interesting is, is that he ditched his changeup, which was his hardest hit secondary in 2020. He threw it like none at all yesterday, or not yesterday, last week in his last start. And he ditched his cutter. And he appears to be playing with a splitter, which he threw four times. Um, something that's interesting to watch going forward, I'm, I, I know I'm recommending him, especially against Cleveland, because um, they just don't have – they have a ton of guys who strike out. And mm -hmm. I think that you could – any given line. day – yeah, any given day you, you could mow through them. There's a, every now and then you'll have guys who are gonna. I mean, Fran Moraes and a couple guys could yeah, like mow with home uh, runs. But. And I actually got to see them play. Um, I actually went and got to go to a, a Tigers game, and they were playing uh, the Cleveland, the team of baseball there yeah. in Cleveland. That's and yeah, Jose baseball. Ramirez is gonna hit bombs. You know, yeah. you gotta be worried about that. Uh, Fran Mill, you know, he does yeah. what he does. Even Eddie Rosario's looking okay. You yeah, know? Eddie Rosario's looking good. Points yep. league darling. Yeah, but, but sprinkled uh, in between there is just I in I I, I love baseball. I watch it all the time. Frequently, I'm like, who is that guy? Yeah, for real. So yeah. I mean, 
the the big thing to watch is his velocity was down a tick and his rpm especially in his fastball was uh 300 spins less the last year it was around 2 2400 uh -oh. this year it's around 2100 yeah. you gotta wonder uh, I don't know. Yeah, you gotta wonder. I mean, they took Bowers' glove. They took Bowers' ball last yeah. uh, last start. So you gotta wonder if maybe he had a little sticky stuff. And MLB is so know. funny. I mean, yeah. just think about how like funny. Like they took the ball and they tucked it away. Right. And yeah. now we're all waiting. It's like, now, what is this? <laughs> I don't know. Who knows how it's gonna turn out? It's but silly. Regardless, Scooball stream him against Cleveland. I think that he yeah. is a good play for K's. Um, and yeah, he's a good high upside play. So, and then Jordan Montgomery is kind of the opposite. He's not going to give you a ton of strikeouts. He had a sparkling debut against the Orioles. Uh, he threw six scoreless innings, had seven strikeouts. It's a lot for him. Um, but the interesting thing was he changed his pitch mix up a little bit. He threw his change up 34% of the time, which was his primary pitch. He went to it first pitch a couple of times. Uh, he cut his sinker usage down a little bit. And that's something to monitor there. It's interesting. But he looked really impressive. And last year, he had a 5.11 ERA. So he was a lot off a lot of people's radar. But mm -hmm. he had a 3.87 XERA. He's the third best. He was the third best in the league last year at limiting hard contact. Um, so he doesn't he doesn't give up a lot of hard contact at all. He's gonna get a he's gonna get a tough Rays squad. I mean, the Rays are gonna be. I mean, they're gonna be good hitters. But I, I think he's gonna consistently be putting up quality innings. I, I think that he's the type of guy that you could probably roll out there a lot of times. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll maybe I'll eat that. But uh, there's but, I've seen and, him picked as a breakout pitcher. Yeah, I know. I was gonna say he was. You know, as I was going through the streamers, you know, for the week, he was on my radar, and I looked to the Rays squad, and I I said no. I was like, you know what? I'm not. So I'm actually very interested to see, yeah. you know, at the drop of a hat, if, if a pitcher can get through the race squad. I don't know if it's going to be home or away. I mean, either way, it's not great. But, um, uh, yeah. yeah, I'll be we'll really see. interested to see that. We'll see. He's only 52% rostered. Scooball's yep. only 29% rostered. And then Kikuchi is only 49% rostered, which if you watch to start, what are you doing? How – uh, I mean, so people will say, haters will say the it was the Giants. The Giants aren't that great of a lineup, but the Giants mash lefties. They, they hit lefties hard for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And we saw that Longoria took Kikuchi deep. Uh, Posey took him deep. I know what uh, year which, is it? What the heck? Yeah, what the heck? <laughs> is this 2011, 2012? Yeah, uh, Longoria has been off to a crazy start. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, you say he doesn't really give up home runs. His first year in the league, he gave up quite a few. But last year, he only had 0 0.6 home runs per nine. I mean, he, he limits hard contact usually, um, at least the home run ball, pretty well. Um, he's going to get a twin squad this week that strikes out a lot. So, I mean, they hit home runs. But, again, Kikuchi's not going to give up a ton of home runs in my, in my mind. And he's got – he's I mean, he had 10Ks. I think his his pitch mix looked really good. He threw 67 of his 89 pitches for strikes against the Giants. He only gave up four hits. Um, and the Twins aren't great against left-handed pitchers. Last This year, in a small sample size, they look like they, they've done pretty well against lefties. But last year, the Twins did significantly less damage against lefties. They had a slugging percentage of only uh, 349 versus 456 against right-handed pitchers. So if you're going to play the splits, uh, I think Kikuchi is a good play there. Yeah, and I, when the twin, you, know, you think of the twins, I think a lot of people think back to the 2019 twins where they broke every single record with the inflated ball. Now, last year, they were ranked 18th in offense. So they're yeah. not this, you know, they're not. Powerhouse. I mean, yeah, and if, I mean, Buxton looks good, but Sano is going to strike out yep. three out of four at bats. Yeah, it was like 35% of the time minimum. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you've got guys yeah. in that line. I mean, it's just not that, it's, I just don't think it's that, uh, you're right, it's not a super powerhouse of a lineup. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, so Scooble, Montgomery, and then Kikuchi and round out your three. And then they I'll uh, quickly hop in the mine here. And we're going to start out with Steven Nats. So the uninspiring, but now all of a sudden I'm buying it. Steven yeah, what, what in the world was that? Ugh, it was pretty insane. Um, I just, it, it, when you look at it, what one, uh, what it, yeah, you got the win, nine strikeouts over 6.1 innings. Yeah. I mean, that's the okay. That's when you get my attention. All right, let's go. He's going against the Royals. He's going to be in Kaufman. The the, the Blue Jays are mashing. He's only thirty four percent rostered. So 
he, I think he's going to be a good start there. Um, number two is going to be Drew Smiley, and I ripped this out of your playbook last week. Yeah. And but I, I mean, hey. It was funny because I actually I was like, oh, Drew Smiley. And then I was going through last week's notes and I'm like, oh, he did pick him. I'm like, I don't <laughs> care. You know, <laughs> he's only 43 percent rostered still somehow. I, I don't know. Um, and he's going against the uh, Cubs next week. And over the for the uh, the first six games, the Cubs are batting 124 as a team. So I'm no genius, yeah. but I don't think that's good. Yeah. Um, they'll turn. I mean, obviously, we don't expect that. Baez will turn around. Rizzo, you know, Chris Bryant. Um, I have tons of Rizzo shares, and I actually paid 20 bucks for him in a dine or in a, um, a in a startup sure. league. I don't know what I was thinking. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. So Drew Smiley versus the, uh, versus the Cubs, 43% rostered. And then lastly, and this is in from the uh, Jake Arietta update desk, I'm going to go with Wade Miley. <laughs> We're going to roll the dice, man. The old veteran pick, 3% rostered, two-start pitcher versus the Giants and the Cleveland team of baseball. Um, hey, he's looking good so far. He didn't have a bad start. He didn't. Hey, uh, I, wouldn't, hey, look. I, I, I was looking him up. I mean, hey, anytime you get six, you got a quality start his first game. And so yeah. they're like not said, worried about week, running him out there. Yeah, like I said last week, trust. I mean – there's, you've got to have guys, teams that you trust to develop their pitchers. I mean, for mm-hmm. me, it's Cleveland, it's Cincy, it's yep. the Dodgers. There's three to four or five teams in the league that you can just – I mean, they're, they're going to roll their guys out there, try to get them quality starts, and yep. yeah. They don't care. I mean, they're yep. not saving Miley for anything. I mean, he's 34. Yep. His best years are, are probably behind him, you know, unless we see a revolution here. But – but his best um, week is ahead of him. Yeah, there we go. And that's what I'm trying to say. Um, but, yeah, his average exit velocity, I mean, you know, it's obviously a very small sample size. We're talking six innings, but it's in the 99th percentile. You know, he's limiting hard contact, which is the name of the game at this point. Um, he's not walking too many people. That's about all we can hope for. And three, 3% roster, two starts. Maybe you don't play him against the Giants and you only go for him with Cleveland, but I'm going to roll him out there for both of them. Why not? There we go. All right. Well, hey, that's our three pitchers and three hitters for week two. Um, we're going to get going here, Christian. Before we do, remind our fans uh, where you can be reached and what you do. You can find me at jchristianmack on Twitter. Um, I write for Pitcher List. I'm hopefully going to start writing for Triple Play. Waiting. Yeah, we're all waiting. Uh, I haven't. What was that? I said we're all waiting on the, know, uh, the next I know, article. I, know. I haven't put anything out yet, but I will. I will. I just – it's not – I don't know. My process is, it's just, I don't even know how to describe it. I just have to have a lightning bolt hit me. I, I can't you. just pump them out. Yep. Uh, yep. But yeah, I write for Pitch List, write for Triple Play, create these videos, find me at J Christian Mac. That's where I'll be. I'll probably be hyping up Sam Hilliard or Winker or someone on Twitter. Awesome. Awesome. Yep. And as always, Mac, it's amazing uh, to sit here and talk baseball with you. Heck yeah. um, Marty underscore Tallman on the uh, the Twitter machine here. I write at uh, Triple Play Fantasy. I'll be coming up with an article, my five biggest overreactions from week one. So keep an eye out on that. Have you seen the, just real quick, have you seen the um, the graphics that are being done for Triple Play? Yeah, they're you solid. Know? Oh my gosh. Solid. I'm so excited for them to come out. Um, so that's a little teaser for my upcoming um, article. But um, yeah, they're they're incredibly good. Um, and then also write for Motor City Bengals, lead fantasy baseball analyst there. Um, you can find me on uh, Twitter, like I said. But yeah, we're going to get going here. Um, look forward to going over our picks for next week. And uh, yeah, enjoy the baseball week. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everyone.